what's okay. happening there. No issue, no issues. So nice to be back here. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So you're recording it, Najus, Najud? Uh, Lisa is recording it. Okay, okay. somebody is recording it. Okay. So maybe I'll begin with a prayer. Yes, do. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time you've given us to come together in your presence to listen to your word and to hear about the glory that you have promised for all your children, the glory of your gifts and fruits and charisms. And we believe, Lord Jesus, today that uh, through our baptism and through our faith in you, all this has already been given to us through, our, through your grace on the cross and through our baptism. We thank you for this and we believe today we're going to learn much more deeper things. And through this knowledge and revelation, we will be a lot more enabled and equipped to do battle for your kingdom. All this we make in the name of mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So praise Lord. Do. Praise God. Yes. So uh, we have finished six charisms. Uh, as I told you, when I began these charisms, three charisms falling under the category of charism of speech, tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Then we had the three charism of mind, mm -hmm. discernment of spirit, utterance of knowledge and utter no, utterance of word. So today, and today and tomorrow, we will be seeing the next three charisms. Here again, uh, comparatively, they are minor charisms and more or less interlinked with each other, interlinked with each other. Okay. Before I begin, any questions on yesterday's topic? Should we take anything on yesterday's topic? If I there is anything, if we have missed out anything before I go to the next charism. Yes. Nothing comes to my mind. Okay. I think we had a lot of question and answer yesterday, but maybe we we'll yeah. quickly check if there's anybody, anybody who wants to regarding the topics we discussed yesterday or day before. Word of knowledge and word of word. I think we covered most of the things. Yes. Anyway, then we will go to the next topic, Jude. In case they have a question, they can always come back to us on that. Yes. 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 Okay. Now today, let me begin with the charism of healing. Healing. See, the healing ministry is very important part of our faith. In fact, when Jesus began his public ministry, this is what he declared. He went to the synagogue in Capernaum. After reading that scroll from Isaiah, this is what he said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, a recovery of sight to the blind, and let the oppressed go free. So when he's declaring his mission, he's definitely mentioning healing as one of the important ministries that he's going to do in the earthly life. Of course, Jesus came for our salvation. So there are three important ministries in the public life of Jesus Christ. Number one is the preaching ministry, proclamation. Number two is the healing ministry. And the third one is the deliverance ministry that he did. These were the three important ministries in the public life of Jesus Christ. In fact, when you look at the selection of the 12 apostles, selection of the 12 apostles, this is what he did that. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. We see this very clearly. Then Jesus called the 12 together and gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. Look, Junior, when Jesus chose the 12 apostles, he's giving them three important ministries there. Right. Deliverance, that's, a, you know, casting out demons. That's a deliverance ministry. Right. Then proclamation, preaching ministry, and the healing ministry. So these are the three important ministries he gave. And this is exactly what the apostles did also when 
when they went out. We read that in Mark chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Mark 6, 12 and 13. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Look here, they are doing these three things. Proclamation, casting out demons and healing the sick. So as an introduction to this charism, we need to understand that healing ministry is a very important ministry in the Catholic Church. In fact, the final words Jesus gave his apostles after before his ascension, he told them, they will pick up Mark 16, 18. They will pick up snakes in their hands. If they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay the hands on the sick and they will recover. So, dude, uh, this healing ministry is very important. But today, we are talking about the charism of healing. Charism of healing. Now, uh, the reason I told you these three charisms are interlinked with each other, healing, miracle, and faith. The reason I said this, this healing charism is a special charism in the sense the person who has this gift will be able to lay the hands on the sick and through the laying of the hands or them proclaiming a healing, that healing will be released in the body of the person. Okay. Now, I will connect this with faith later, but let me mention it. I remember a few days back, Joe asked me this question. When we spoke about the prophecy, he asked me, so suppose I somebody comes to me who's sick and I say, prophesize the word of God of healing for them. Is that a prophecy? He asked me. It's a prophecy. Right. Now, this healing charism is very different from the other healing that we proclaim. For example, Jude, suppose uh, somebody who's sick comes to you. Just for an example, let me ask you. Do you have the charism of healing? Just for an example. No. No. But somebody comes to you who's sick. What will you do to now? I will uh, tell them what the Bible has promised and ask them to... Uh, okay. You know, well, let me make it very simple. Will you pray for their healing? <laughs> will you pray? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Suppose, let's take... We both are there. Let's take it as in... Um, as an exercise, I have a problem. I come to you, Jude, for prayer. I have a sickness. Right. What will you do? Yeah, so I would uh, uh, look at two aspects. One mm. is your, your connect with Jesus. Okay, I'll leave that part, my connect. I have a sickness, I'm coming to you. Now you have to pray for me. Yeah. Now so you will... said you don't have the charism of healing. Yeah, so I will use the word ah. where, where God is already healed. Like okay, similar example, maybe 1 Peter 2, 24, yes. by yes. the wounds of Jesus, you're healed. Yes. You're telling that. Yes. Now tell me, are you exercising the charism of healing here? No. And what are you doing? You're praying for my healing then? Yeah, I am. Uh, I think the okay. I will tell, that's, that's a point and I, I'm coming to. It's so prophecy. Thing. More than prophecy, this is a charism of faith. Now you don't have the charism of healing. But you have faith that through the word of God, through the promise of God, this person can be healed. So why I'm telling this is when we say this charism of healing is given to some people only, others will ask me, so brother, if somebody sees, can't I pray for them? Can't I pray over them? Yes, you can pray using the charism of faith that you have not the charism of healing. That is, you have a faith that Jesus will heal this person. You have a faith, but what the word, written word of God promises that this person will be healed and you're claiming that word for this person. So here, you are not using the charism of healing, but you're using the charism of faith here. Faith here. And through your faith, this person will get healed. You understand the difference, Jose? Yes. Yes, sorry, Jude, I'm getting saying Jude. Jude. No problem. No. So, <laughs> you understand? 
I, I got that. So we haven't covered the charism of faith, right? No, we are coming to that because that is will be linked to that. It's a small thing, but I just told you to see it so that people understand the difference right here itself. Okay. Okay. But this is a special charism where people are given the gift of healing. That specifically they can heal the people through the power of the spirit. You understand that? That's a difference. That's a difference. Everybody need not have this charism of healing. But even the person who does not have the charism of healing can exercise the charism of faith and heal the person. So we need to know the difference here. We will come to that faith maybe tomorrow. That's a very small part, but we'll cover it tomorrow. So I said this here so that people understand the difference here. Now, when I go to the definition of healing, there's no definition. They pray for them either by laying the hands or praying for them and they get healed. That's all. There is no need of further definition for that. But, but as I've been telling Joe's earlier, this charism is not as simple as we think. Though on the outset, it is simple. You pray for that healing. Since you have the gift, that person gets healed. Simple as that. But then we need to understand this little clearly. For, for, let's go a little deeper. Origin of sickness. We know, need to know what is the origin of sickness, first of all. Without knowing that, we cannot be able to complete this charism. Now, God did not create any sickness. Do you agree with me, Jude? Yes. He did not create any sickness. Okay. Because God will not create anything that's bad for you and me. Genesis 1, 27 and 28 says, so God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Now, if God creates you and me in his image, will there be any sickness or infirmity in us? No. 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 So one more word of God we will see. Psalms 139 verses 14. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So, how has God created you, Jude? Wonderfully. Fearfully. Fearfully and wonderfully. Yes. And the word fearfully has a lot of meaning here. When we say fearfully, it doesn't mean God was scared when he created. I'll give an example to understand that. Have you been in a childhood days, by any chance, have you been to the beach, Jude? Yes, Okay, where, where, where did you live in your childhood days? Mostly in Kerala and a little Kerala. bit in Chennai. Okay, fine. Chennai, Chennai boys will know that, you and me. <laughs> I also lived very close to the beach. I know, little children, what do they do in the beach? They okay. Remember, they make the sand castles. Have you seen yes, that? Yes, yes. Maybe you also made it. I also made it. No, when we make this, we do it fearfully. Yes? What's because... It? Yeah, it's, we make it very fearfully because the chances of it being destroyed are very great. So that means we make it fearfully. That means what? So careful we are in making it so that it doesn't crumble down. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Now, now, the psalmist is using the same words to describe how God created you. And that means with so much of love and care and commitment and, you know, we cannot describe it. It's not possible to describe it. That's how God created you and me. So there is no way God can ever create any sickness in us. Okay? We know that very clearly. Now, how does sickness come? The first reason why I'm saying this is, why am I going to this? Because when the person who has the <clears throat> charism of healing, exercise the healing, there are other things that he needs to keep in mind and do. Let's take the cause of our sickness first. The first reason why we are sick is because of original sin. Original sin. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree in the garden. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in that day you eat it, you shall die. Here die means... No, we lose the grace of God, all the blessings we lose. So, 
original sin is the first reason why we are sick today. Clear about it, Jews? Yes. Uh, some of you may think, oh, are we not baptized? I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Don't worry. Catechism of the Catholic Church 418 tells us like this. Catechism of the Catholic Church 418 tells us, as a result of your original sin, human nature is weakened in its power. Subject to ignorance, suffering, domination of death, and inclined because of original sin, we are weakened, inclined to certain sickness and suffering. So the first reason, Jude, why we are sick is original yes, sin. Original sin. Now, whose image are we created, Jude? God so much. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, I'm not saying you're wrong. We are right, but I want you to understand something more clearly. Here. Look, Genesis 1.27 says, God created humankind in his image, in his likeness. Okay? That was Adam was the first one. But when Adam committed sin, did he lose the image of God? No. He was still in the image of God? Yes. What image is that, Jim? I think the uh, spiritual, the spirit was in him still. Ah, spirit was there, but was it alive? It wasn't uh, fully alive. Yeah, so he lost the image of God. Let's say that. See, God's image is an immortal image. Immortal. No death. No corruption. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And that was what man was created. But God told him, when you eat it, you will die. That means you will lose that immortal image of God and you will become a mortal being. Mortal being. So actually, man lost the image of God, the grace of God. Yes? Okay. That's it. Now, Adam became a fallen nature. That's what we say, a small fallen nature. From an immortal being, he became a mortal being. He lost that image of God. Now, after that, Adam has children. Children. First, he had Cain and Abel leave them. Then Adam had another son called Seth. When you read the Bible, Genesis 5 onwards, it's from Seth the further generations of Adam starts. So we all come from that line. Adam, Seth and that line. Clear, Jude? Yes. Now, at the birth of Adam, sorry, at birth of Seth, the son of Adam, Something interesting the Bible says. Let's read that. Genesis 5, 3. When Adam had lived 130 years, he became the father of a son in his likeness according to his image. Whose image was Seth here? Adam's image. Fallen nature of Adam. You get it? Okay. So that's what we call as the original sin. So we are all born in this fallen nature. And through baptism, we are incorporated in the image of God. When you so say we are in the image. Just to get the logic, you're saying that because God said if you eat the fruit, you will die. Yes, because die. Because Adam ate the fruit, he uh, lost the uh, spiritual... Immortal nature of God. Immortal nature of God. Okay, yeah. which, okay, got that. Then he became a mortal being who is subject to death. Yes. Okay. Now, and Seth was born in that mortal nature of Adam. Okay, you understand that? Yes. It says very clear, this image, image of Adam, fallen Adam, not of God. So you and I, when we are born, we are born in this fallen nature. That's why at the baptism, we are dying to the old self and incorporate in the body of Christ. So when you say we are in the image of God, I'm not saying no, but we need to understand this. Therefore, original sin is a cause for all the sickness. Mm -hmm. Now, we may have this interesting question. Oh, Jesus died so that we are set free from original sin. Do you agree with me? Yes. So, but then, so what we need to do today? Jesus already died on the cross. Yes. So what we need to do? We need to have faith. Faith in, in that. Praise God. That is the exact answer. You gave me the perfect answer. So, we need to have faith in the uh, salvic power of Jesus Christ. Yes. That he died on the cross and rose again. Okay. So, 
any sickness that comes to us because of original sin what we need now is the faith in jesus christ right right so if somebody if you come to me for healing okay and i have the charism of healing if i pray for you will you be healed hmm let's imagine no don't think too much simple question i have the charism of healing yes you have a sickness yes when you come and if i pray for you will it be healed yes yes you will be healed but i should know what is the cause of your sickness hmm. is it because of original sin okay in the sense if original sin is the cause what do you need now jude you need to believe have the faith in jesus. faith you need yes yeah. so yes. in addition to me healing you what should i tell you put your faith in jesus christ so the charism of healing should not be just i put my hand on you and heal you i should strengthen your faith here because i know it is because of your lack of faith you are sick today get my point you right i will give you an example one example we will take this woman with the hemorrhage she came and came and touched the fringe of jesus garments right what did jesus say daughter your faith has made you well well so look at this who healed her her faith it was jesus who healed her okay in simple terms it was christ to heal her but there is something required for that that was her faith you get that dude therefore if somebody comes to me with a sickness and i have the charism of healing i can heal that person but i have to understand what is the cause of that sickness and help that person remember in the healing ministry of jesus christ you see different words and different method jesus uses why because the healer is one and only jesus right nothing else but why is he using different different ways Based that is according to the uh, that person why is that person sick jesus understood that and accordingly he exercised the charism of healing so if somebody comes to me and they are sick it is because of their lack of faith i have to heal them and strengthen their faith too otherwise the charism of healing is not complete get my point so when you say it's not complete will the healing happen healing will happen but again they will fall sick okay healing will happen i'm not saying no healing will happen but it will be very temporal okay you know that's why many people i've seen in the retreats for example in our center sundays we used to have this convention uh, one day bible convention mm-hmm. i've seen many people when there is some healing happening father will announce they will claim it and testify it i am healed of my back pain next week the same person will come and say i am healed of my headache next week the same person will come and say i am healed of my knee pain i always then one week late one month later again they will be healed of back pain i wonder what happened to the healing that they got one week back or one two weeks back why is it coming back because the charism of healing is not completed in them okay you get the point you mm, got it so healing itself is simple you pray for them and they get healed simple right, right. but what is this charism special about that's the thing the second reason any are we are we, are we clear here shall i move forward yes okay anyway if they have questions they can come to me later also the second reason why we are sick today is because we live a life of sin life of sin if i live in sin there's every chance that i may fall sick let me give one word of god wisdom of solomon chapter 1 verses 12 and 13 wisdom of solomon chapter 1 verses 12 and 13 it says do not invite death by the error of your life or bring on destruction by the works of your hand because god did not make death and he does not delight in the death of the living the jew the bible is clear do not invite death death means sickness trouble whatever it is right you get it by the error of your life do not bring destruction sickness by the works of your hand 
So, if I live a life of sin, it's not original sin, okay? After that, if I continue to live in sin, there's every chance that I may fall sick. Mm -hmm. yeah? You agree with me? Yes. Now, a person who is in sin, again, you, um, you have the charism of healing, okay? I come to you for healing. Say, say, be a back pain or whatever it is. Now you have the charism of healing. If you pray for me, will I get healed? Yes. Yes. But then what you have to also do, find out the cause of my sickness. Mm. So in this case, what is the cause of my sickness? My living in sin. Sin. So what you have to tell me? Help me to come out of that sin yes. too. Yes. Otherwise, what happened? The healing is not complete. Okay. It's temporary. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Yes. Remember, Jesus did this. That's why I said, we can learn all these things from the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Nothing strange mm -hmm. from the ministry. I'll give you one example. Jesus, uh, in John chapter 5, in his many examples we can see, one or two we will see. John chapter 5, Jesus is coming to the pool of Bethsaida. A man is sitting near the pool of Bethsaida for 38 long years. We know that, no, Jude? Yes. We all know that. Now, Jesus is asking him, do you want to be made well? Yes. And he says, there's nobody to put me Thank in this, you. all those things. Yes. Then Jesus told him, take up your mantle. Walk. Walk. Was he healed? Yes. Yes, he was healed. Now, uh, unfortunately, it was a day of Sabbath. So the Pharisees caught, catch this man and ask him, why are you carrying the mat and all these things? Okay, we're not going to that. Yeah. Then they asked him, who healed you? This man did not know Jesus Christ. He says, I don't know. That's what he said. And he, what did he say? He said, I don't know. But then Matthew, sorry, John 5.14 says like this, John 5.14. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. Do you think the Jews? Yes. In the yes. first instant, what did Jesus say? Woman, your faith has made you well. Mm. Look, it's because of the, uh, no, that woman, because of original sin. So Jesus strengthened her faith. Yes? Yes. In this case, the same healing the same healer, the same healing. But the cause of sickness was different. Mm. A life of sin. So what did Jesus say? Sin no more. Clear about it? Yeah, I think in the case understand? of the paralyzed man also, he said, your sins are forgiven. Yes, for in Mark chapter 2, four yes. people carrying the paralyzed man. Yes. Did Jesus put his hand on him and heal him? No. no. Did he tell him, your faith has made you well? No. no. He said, your sins are forgiven. Get up and go. So these two beautiful examples where the cause of the sickness was sin. Yes, yes. And therefore, Jesus is exercising the charism of cautioning them about their sinful life. So sir, I'm just getting a call. I'll just take this call. Yes, yes. I'll hold on for a minute. Go ahead. I'll hold on. Go ahead. I'm back. Sorry. Yes, no problem. No problem. So you understood the difference, Jude, here? Yes. That's why I said this charism of healing may seem to be very simple. And the definition is very simple. You have the gift of healing. You put your hand or pray for somebody and they get healed. Yes. That's all. Mm -hmm. Simple. But then, if you are really led by the Spirit of God, when you exercise this charism, we need to go beyond just healing the person. That's why I said today, we need to have extreme understanding and caution 
and the sensitivity to the spirit to exercise this charism. Yes. Let me, can I ask a question? Yes, you go ahead. So, uh, if you look at healing, the first way what we discussed, that is the charism of faith. Mm. Uh, in that case also, uh, isn't it important that we look at the cause of the sickness? Yeah. In that case, what happens is you might not know because you don't have the charism of healing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but I, I'll come to that also. We'll discuss that when we come to that also. But there are certain things we can do. Okay, uh, I mentioned that only for you to know the difference between these two. Okay. Anyway, when I speak about that, I will definitely touch this point also, so that we are clear about it. Okay, the kind of faith. There's always this discussion about when somebody comes to you for healing, or let's say you're in mm -hmm. a position where you can lead a person to be healed. Mm -hmm. uh, so what, what is important? Is it bringing the person to Christ? Yes, to that is your primary goal. Okay, that's why I'm mentioning these things. Today, many people, they say, uh, they say put the hand on people and say, you're healed, go. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, 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 that's not enough. I'm not saying they're not healed. I don't know. But that is not enough. The idea of healing is to draw them to Jesus Christ. Very important. That's why I'm saying, see, Jude, for that matter, very clearly the definition of charism itself mm -hmm. for the good of the world, for the good of the people, and for building up the church. When we say building the church, building the faith of people, mm -hmm. that's the purpose. Otherwise, why do I have to heal and send me? See, I'm not a magician or a, you know, uh, this, what do you say, this um, uh, healers of this right, world. Right. Okay. That's not the purpose. The purpose is not healing. Healing is only a means to draw them to Christ. Yes. Yes. That should be clear, very clear. That's not only for this charism. In fact, I'll come to that at the end. I'll give an example of that. Okay. Yes. At the end. But that's an important point, Judy. Brought it out. So it doesn't matter. Even if he tells us 100 times, it doesn't matter because this has to sink into us. Mm. This truth. Yes. Every charism is to draw people to Christ and not, I'm not healing anybody because I have the power of healing. God is channelizing his healing through me to draw people to him. That's all. Yeah. Or I don't heal because uh, God has given me the power or, or the person needs desperate healing alone. It mm -hmm. may be, but, but then my ultimate goal is to get the person. To yes. Christ. Yes. Yes, even miracles also. Uh, we're coming to all that's why I said these three charisms are somewhere interlinked to each other. Mm -hmm. Healing, miracle, and sin. Let's go then. The okay. third reason why we are doing works of the devil. Mm -hmm. Because of some diabolic influence, we can fall sick. Very much possible. Of course, the details of that I won't go into it because that comes under a different category. But let's understand. Even Satan can bring some destruction in our physical nature, sicknesses. Matthew 9, one or two examples I'll give you. Matthew chapter 9, verse 32. After they had gone away, a demonic who was mute was brought to him. Dude, here, a person, a boy who was mute, yes. could not speak. What do we call a person who cannot speak normally? Yes. Is it a sickness? Yes. Yes, it's a sickness, of course. Yeah. But look at this here. The Bible says a demonic was mute. So what was the cause of the sickness for this boy? Work of the evil one. Work of the evil one. So that's why I said the third reason why we can be, become uh, sick is because of demonic influences. Demonic influences. One more example we will see. Luke 13. Okay. So what did Jesus say? Just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her. Oh, look at this. Who crippled her? Spirit. A spirit, evil spirit. Now, so we can very well conclude that certain sicknesses is because of demonic affliction. Mm. Clear to you? Yes, yes. First reason why we are sick is because of original, original sin. Though we are washed of original sin in baptism, still our lack of faith can bring the effect of original sin on us. Mm. Okay. Number two, because I live a life of sin. sin. And the third reason is because of the works of the evil one. 
I think this okay. is beautiful. Yeah, this is beautiful. The, the, the reasons you've explained are beautiful. Yes, brother, because that's when the charism becomes really meaningful. And that's why, you know, people, uh, they go, they stray into somebody says, somebody who has the power of healing, you will have a long queue in front of them. Yes. Well, I'm not discounting the power of this person, but are we completing the charism of healing? Right. Am I drawing them to Jesus Christ? Am I helping this person to come out of the root problem? That's the word we have to use. What is the root problem for this? Yeah, Jude? Yes. Otherwise, what? It's like chopping the weeds on top. It comes up a few days. We right. need to uproot it. Yes? yes. Jesus uprooted it. He uprooted the lack of faith in that woman. He uprooted the sin in these two people whom we example. Now, it is a question of diabolic influence. Now, Catechism of the Catholic Church 2852 tells us like this. A murderer from the beginning, a liar and the father of lies. Satan is the deceiver of the world through whom sin and death entered the world. So, Satan can bring that sin and the destruction in our bodies too. Is Lord? Hallelujah. Yes. Okay. Okay, now, uh, before I go to that, I'll go to the previous one. I think I missed something there. Okay, now, okay, I come back to the slide. Now, uh, let's take the second word of God here, Luke 13, 11, or even the first one, Matthew 9, 32. When Jesus, this mute person was brought to Jesus Christ, do you know what Jesus did, Jude? Did he say, did he say, uh, your faith has made you well go? He cast out the... He cast out the spirit, yes? Mm -hmm. And the boys began to speak. Yes. So what did Jesus do? Did he heal this boy? No. No, in general, did he heal him? Yes. Yes, he healed him. Yes. But how did he heal him? Through deliverance. By delivering him from that demonic prison, no? by the affliction. Yes. Therefore, he went to the root of the problem and delivered that person. Imagine Jesus had put his hand on him and said, speak in the name of God. He would have spoken, yes. Mm. But then, is the evil spirit still in him? Yes, possibly. Yeah, yes. possibly. Because he's not been delivered. Yes. So when he goes that side, can the spirit again manifest and do something yes. to him? Yes. So Jesus knew that. So how did he exercise the authority or the charism of healing there? By going to the root of the problem and delivering this boy from a affliction. So I come to you, Jude. Again, we both are talking, example using. You have the gift of healing. I have a problem. I have a uh, diabolic affliction in me. The sickness is because of that. Now, if you pray for me, will I be healed? No. No, generally, just like that. Can I be healed? That's all I'm asking. Yes, I can be healed because you are a, have the gift of okay. healing. Okay. okay. But the problem is that's going to be very fractional or temporal or may not happen also. It could be that also. Now, if you have the real charism working in you, you have to set me free from the demonic position. So either if you have the authority to do it, you can do it, or send me to a priest who can do the you know, ministry of deliverance. Clear about it. So we have to send them. Clear question, you? brother. Yeah. yeah. Question. So here uh, you uh, need need the uh, what is the other gift? Uh, the the knowledge or the the revelation that there is a affliction, there is a evil affliction here. It will come together, Jude. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Because when God gives you the gift of healing, look at this. How did Jesus operate? When yeah. Jesus, you know, when a sick person was brought to Jesus Christ, did Jesus know the root cause of the sickness? He did. And the same spirit is there in you and me, Jude. Okay. Okay. That is the ministry Jesus is sharing with you and me. Mm. When I say the healing charism, it is the healing charism of Jesus that is given to you and me. Yes? Right. So, like Jesus knew, I also will know. That's what I'm trying to make. Okay. That's very important. That's, and what I have to do, see, as a lay person, 
you may not have the authority to do deliverance on somebody. Yes. Yes. So what do you need to do? Okay, you go for a deliverance. Go to this priest and pray. He will pray a deliverance for you. So we have to channelize it. Clear about it? Yes. Otherwise, that person will not be set free of a sickness. Mm. And uh, don't think, no, oh, I have the healing. But where will I get this knowledge from? No. We are sharing the same spirit of Christ here. So the, the same uh, charism that Jesus operated is operating from me. Yes, that same spirit is working through us. Therefore, the spirit that gave Jesus the power to find out the root cause, if that same spirit is working in me, will I not know what is the cause of this? Yes, you should. Ah, this is where people don't use it properly. That's what I'm trying to come to. So when, you use, when you say use it, um, let's say I have the charism of healing. You're saying, um, if you use layman terms, by default, I also have the uh, the the revelation, uh, the, the knowledge, what, what do you call that, brother? The, the gift to discern what is the... Yes, that's what it comes together, no? Because the same spirit was in Jesus. Hmm, but if I'm not aware that I have it, then... More than not being aware, Ju, what happens is here, I'll tell you where the root problem is. More than not being aware, the moment I know, generalizing it, okay, I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but generally what happens? Today, what is happening is the moment we have the gift of healing, the first thought that comes to most people is, oh, they have the power of healing. So they don't allow the spirit to work in them because they are thinking they have the power, they can heal. Okay. You get it? Yes. That is going to hinder the spirit working in them properly. That's why many people know heal, heal, heal. It's just like that people proclaim healing. It cannot happen like that. Because Jesus, when God heals, the healing is complete. I'm not saying that person will not fall sick again. But at least that moment, that cause is completely set free. Get it? It. One more question, brother. This this, yeah, please, this, this charism is at least to, to me it seems to be a special charism. It's, it's every like charism is special, brother. Yeah, true. So in, in the case of this, uh, so I'm just my question is actually uh, how would how would a person know he's got this charism? Okay. See, um, this again has to be in the authority of the church. Uh, see, we will know when we pray for somebody when it happens. Okay. See, for example, if I come to you and you don't have the charism, you can still pray for me. Mm -hmm. You can pray for me. Probably in such cases, so we cannot give a blanket explanation how to discern that. Mm -hmm. Probably a spiritual guide and through the various other ministries, there will be a way you will come to know about it. Yeah, I okay. have heard that. I have heard counselors saying, you know, the ex and so has this. Oh. So not for me, but uh, you know, some of my friends that, mm -hmm. that they have been, that they've got the revelation from the counselor that, huh. they, that they've been given the gift of healing, the charisma of healing. Okay, yeah. good, good. Okay, okay. I, I think there's another question, Jude. Is there another question there? You can see yes, something in my chat box. My system is a little slow. Okay, I, I opened it also. One minute. What is the question, uh, uh, Okay. There's no question there. Uh, there's okay, no this topic available to listen again on YouTube. Yes. I think you, you can answer that question. Yes, it would be available. I can give them the details there. Yes, yes. So you can go, <laughs> and if you're subscribed to Happy Families, you can go to the playlist and this would be there. Maybe tomorrow it will be oh, uploaded. Probably you can put on the chat box for them, Jude, if you can do that. Okay. So because uh, this is a good, uh, it's not a related question, but I would suggest that all of you go back and listen to this two, three times. You know, it's, uh, then we can really understand it. Take your time on this. What do you think, Jude? Is that the right way to do it? Absolutely, absolutely. Because, yes, these are all something different. We need to really listen to that again and again. Very yes, important. Yes. Okay. Now we go to the fourth way. Emotional disturbances and inner wounds that we have can also cause some sickness in us. Emotional um, disturbances and inner wounds. Inner wounds can cause that. Book of Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19, 20. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is vulnerable and gone. My soul continues things of it and is bowed down within me. Bow down within me. 
Look, Jude here. Okay. Uh, Jude has put it already on the chat box. The details, you can follow that. Yeah. So, Jude, certain kinds of emotional disturbances can also cause some sickness in us. Yes? Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, we know that. Everybody knows that. Anxiety, tension, all this can cause. So, in this case, so let's again come to you and me, Jude. I come to you with the sickness. It's because of some emotional disturbances or maybe some inner wounds in me. Now, when you pray for me, in addition to healing me, what you have to do? Discern. No, you know that. Now you're discerned and you know it's because of this. Address the inner wounds. Yeah. So, we need to go for an inner healing. Yeah. So you need to tell that person, yes, do one thing, attend an inner healing session or whatever it is, or inner healing counseling, whatever it is, so that the root cause is addressed. Clear about it? Yes. yes. Very important. Otherwise, the person will get healed, but unless the wounds are healed, yes. it's going to manifest again and again, yes. again and again. Okay. So that's what is important in this charism. Yeah, people will come to you. I'm having this problem. What is this? It's because of some anxiety, because of some hurts in you. Help them out of it. That's a healing. The fifth reason, Jude, there's a fifth reason. You want to hear that? Of course. Very interesting. Okay, I'll tell you. Neglect of our health. If, meant, see, our body is a temple. If I don't take care of the body, I'm bound to be sick. Is it not our responsibility to take care of our body? Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. It's true, Jude. I'll tell you, the book of Sirach, of course, this doesn't need much of explanation, but let me mention it also to you. Book of Sirach says like this. Sirach 37, 29 to 31 says, okay. Sirach 37, 29 to 31 says like this. Do not be greedy for every delicacy and do not eat without restraint. For overeating brings sickness and gluttony needs to nausea. Many have died of gluttony, but the one who guards prolongs his life. Simple. Okay. Simple. I'll all, tell you a test. Huh? All, all the worldly wisdom about uh, you know, the right nutrition and eating is all there in the Bible. Yes. But that's true because, see, our body is the temple of the living God. Yes. And it's a responsibility to take care of our body. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. God has given us the wisdom to take care of our body. I'll give a small testimony here. A very, very you know, funny incident which happened just a couple of years back, just before the lockdown. You know, during our residential retreats, on a Tuesday evening around that five o'clock, the tea break time for the retreatants, I had finished my session and I was going out. The retreatants were there for the tea break. One man came to me and said, brother, brother, please pray for me. I have an acidity and you know, gastritis problem. I said, okay, I'll pray for you. Then he said, brother, this is the last two months. This is the fourth retreat I'm attending. Yeah, I knew also because I've seen him very regularly for the past few months. And he said, the only reason I'm coming here is to be healed of this acidity and gastritis. Then he told me, even last retreat, father announced somebody with acidity and gastritis getting healed. But brother, I'm not healed. Please pray for me. So I said a small prayer for him and I walked off. Nothing, I had no exercising of healing and all. Just said a normal prayer for him and I walked off. The next day, on a Wednesday, I was coming around uh, same time, around the tea break time. I was coming towards the retreat session because I had some work there. Just uh, a few meters away from our, you know, before we enter our retreat center, there's a small cafe there small cafe there. Some of the couple of the volunteers were standing outside and having a tea. When they saw me coming, they stopped me and said, come, come join us for a tea. They're standing outside. So I was just standing and talking to them. I saw this man inside the cafe. It's a small cafe. Only two tables are there. I saw this man sitting there and this table was full of all these samosas, puffs, and so many items were there in front of him. First of all, there is no permission for the retreatants to come out. Then I asked the volunteers, how come that retreatant is sitting here? They said, you know, this man, somehow he fools the watchman and comes out. 
because our retreat center, even the daily uh, mass is happening, so some people come and go. So he'll put the badge into his pocket, and the watchman doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Then they told me this fellow is coming for the third or fourth time. From the first retreat, we are having a problem with this fellow. Mm-hmm. Every listen to this, huh? during every break, he will go down to the refectory, eat fully come out to this cafe and again eat fully and go. Okay. And he's doing it for every break for the last three, four retreats. <laughs> this fellow is coming and telling me, acidity, gastritis, pray for me, nothing is happening. Let me tell you, Jude, even God cannot heal you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> See, you don't take care of your body. Yes. You don't do that. And you say healing, healing. What is going to happen? So yeah. that's another reason. We need to be extremely careful of that. That's another reason. We need to understand that's very much a part of the healing process. Healing process. So, yeah, there are things. But these things, we need to take care of it also. Okay. Right. For the healing part of it. Jesus is the only healer. Dude. Only God is the healer. Exodus 15, 26. I am Yahovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals. The Hebrew verse says, Yahovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals. Therefore, Jesus is the only healer. Let's be very clear about that. Nobody else can heal us. And already Jesus healed us by taking all of the sickness upon himself. We all know that. He's already taken upon himself. 1 Peter 2.24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness and by his wounds you have been healed. So Jesus has already taken upon his body all our sickness. Again, Isaiah 53, 4 and 6 says, Surely he has borne our infirmities, carried our diseases, Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment. And by his wounds we are healed. Therefore, Jesus has already taken every sickness upon his body. But what is this charism of healing? Charism of healing. And come to that. Letter of St. James chapter 5 verse 14 says, Are any man among you sick? They should call the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. So, even though Jesus has done all these things, the charism of healing channelizes the healing power of God onto others. Clear, Jude? So, the person with the charism is only channelizing the healing power of God. Am I clear on that? Yes. Yes. The charism of healing is only to glorify God and draw people closer to God. Jude, I made this point again. We were discussing this. Yes, yeah, absolutely. The charism of healing is only to glorify God and draw people closer to God for nothing else. Nothing else. That's the only person. Look, I'll give an example. Acts chapter 3. Okay, Peter and John are going to the temple. Yes. Yes. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. walk. Now, Jesus, is, uh, Peter is exercising the charism of healing. Yes, Jude? Yes. Was the man healed? Yes. Okay. What happens then? He stands up and walks. Okay. After that, what happens? Okay. I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. They arrest Peter. Okay. Mm-hmm. They arrest Peter and bring him to the council of Jews. Mm-hmm. Because this man has been healed on a Sabbath or whatever it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. They bring him before the council of Jews. Now, what did Peter do there? They asked him, they asked him simple, how did you heal this man? Mm-hmm. By what authority you healed? Did Peter say, I have the gift of healing? No. Did he say, I have the power to heal people? No. What did he say? It is the same, the Jesus who has healed. Yes, he said like this. If this man is standing in good health, it is because of the name of Jesus Christ whom you crucified. 
And he said, Acts 4 12, he says, and there is salvation in nobody else except in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. So now, that day, what happened, Jude? 5,000 people accepted Jesus Christ. Hmm. How many? 5,000. Why? Because, because of... they saw the healing that Peter hmm. exercised on this man. Yes? Yes. Now, through this healing, what did Peter do? Did he glorify himself? Did he claim to be a healer? Did he say, I have the Holy Spirit in me? Did he say that? He glorified God. He used that opportunity to draw people to Christ. Hmm. Yeah? Are we clear? Absolutely. So there's That's a question. So there's hmm. a question with somebody has that more of an observation. Hmm. So if Jesus is the only healer, Hmm. Why do people, many people say that uh, Mother Mary has healed them? Okay. So, yeah. Jesus channelizes healing through Mother Mary. You understand that? Yes. He can channelize it through her. Healing can happen in different ways. Okay. God can use any method of healing, but he is the healer. Okay. For example, I'll, uh, since you asked this question, let me come to you. Um, can we read... Can we read? Please so some, the scripture verses. Which were Okay. Acts, Acts. Acts chapter 4. Maybe you can read from 1 onwards itself. Generally, you can read Acts chapter 4 verses 1 onwards. You can read. Okay. Clear about that, Jude? Yes. Okay, Jude. This question was asked. You have the Bible with you by chance? Yes. Okay. Can you read John chapter 9 verses 7? John chapter 9 verses 7. So uh, go. Uh, he said to him, "Go wash in the pool of." Uh, can you read one verse before that also, yes. Jude? Yes, yes. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud on the man's eyes. Mm. Saying, then, saying to him, "Go wash in the pool of Siloam." Then okay. He went and okay. That's him. enough. That's enough, Jude. Now, tell me, Jude. What healed this man? Is it Jesus? Is it the spit of Jesus Christ? Is it that mud or is it that pool? Which healed him? It's the power of Jesus. That's all. Jesus is showing he can manifest his power through anything. Hmm. You understand that? He can manifest his power through a material. He can manifest his power through a person. He can manifest his power through a medium. Clear about it? Yes. So he can channelize his healing. And Jesus has given the channelizing of Mother Mary. Nowhere has Mother Mary ever claimed to heal. Through her intercession, we are healed. When we say Mother Mary healed me, it is not Mother Mary who is healing you. Her intercession heals her. It is not I who heal people. God is using me as a medium, as a channel to exercise healing. It is not an object that heals us. God can use an object to heal people. I'll come to that when we come to the miracles also. One more point I'll yeah. make. I, I hope I've answered that question. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I think it's good that it came up because there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about this and uh, a lot of, I would say, wrong notions also among Catholics. That I go yes. to go, go for this novena and that, that devotion to the saint will heal me. Yeah, it is not the saint who heals, he intercedes yes. for your healing. Yes. And because of the intercession, power of intercession, healing happens. Yes. That's what we need to understand that. We need to know that fine, you know, thin line which separates the both. We should know that very clearly. Yeah, very clearly. I think just to add that in, in all this endeavor to, to go for the novena for healing. We shouldn't forget the primary purpose is to come to God. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Everything is to go toward you. Draw no one to God. God will do that. He can use any method of healing, any channel of healing you can use. That's why I gave you that example of the blind man getting healed very clearly. Right, okay, right. now, yeah, going further. Catechism of the Catholic Church says the Holy Spirit give to some a special charism of healing. So as to make manifest the power of the grace of the risen Lord. Jude, are we clear here? That charism is given for what? To manifest 
the power of the grace of the risen Lord, not for anything else. Clear about it? Yes. But the church also teaches us, but even the most intense prayer do not always obtain the healing of illness. Mm -hmm. There are certain times, certain sickness will not be healed. God will allow it only for a greater good. What the greater good is, we may not know at that time, but over time, you will know that. God allows certain things for something greater. We need to understand that every time you need not be healed. The best case is Paul here. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9. The thorn. Yeah. Yeah. Three times appealed to the Lord about it. That would relieve me. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. So God allowed it in Paul. Why? For something greater. For something greater. Okay. Now, uh, I think we can uh, wind up with this now. Acts chapter 9, verse 32 and 35. Remember, uh, Jude, I told you this also. Now, as Peter went here and there among all the believers, he came down also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Annas, Annas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your mate. And immediately he got up. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw it and turned to the Lord. Look at this. When Jesus, uh, sorry, Peter exercised the charism of healing, the people are drawn to, to the Lord. God and not to Peter. Yes. So Peter is directing them to God. That should be the only motive or only thing that the healer should do. Direct people to God. Okay. Direct them to God. So my dear friends, uh, we come to the end of this charism. We'll wind up here just to summarize it. Yes. God is the only healer. He gives us the uh, charism of healing to people, but he channelizes grace. But the charism of healing goes beyond just healing that person, identifying, helping that person, removing the root cause and bringing them to Jesus Christ. Am I clear on this, Jude? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, uh, tomorrow we will see miracles and faith together. Small charisms. Okay. So we will probably finish that comfortably tomorrow. So meanwhile, uh, any questions for the day, Jude? Shall we take some questions? Yes, we should. And I think there yeah. is one question which has come up. Uh, I think it's yeah. about this uh, uh, the, the aspect of uh, you know Catholics praying to saints and mm. Mother Mary versus mm. uh, Jesus, who is the main healer. Mm. So I think uh, we, we probably should uh, maybe re-emphasize that fact that it is Jesus who heals. But as Brother said, um, Jesus has given us... More immersion updates. Ernestine called up. Uh, Valentine, you know... They want to go to more immersion is there. Valentine, can you... Wilson, Valentine Wilson, can you mute your mic? Please. Oh, okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah. He said yeah. tomorrow immersion is there. <laughs> so... Um, I think we should all understand it is Jesus who healed, but he has permitted uh, different ways in which healing, and one of them is through the intercession of the saints. And yes. Brother, also, you showed the verse from, I forget which, where Jesus healed through applying the, uh, the, the mud and the spittle. So it's not the mud which healed, but it was Jesus' power which healed. So we should understand that God has permitted this, but finally, the, I, I would think the bottom line is that it is Jesus who heals. And that's something yes. that we should all have. Absolutely correct, Jude. It's only Jesus who heals. Yahuwah Rafa. There's nobody else who can heal us. I'm the Lord who heals. But he can channelize his healing through many, many ways. Through the person who has the charism. Um, through the word of God. Through sacraments. You know, yes. Jesus can use. Sacraments heal. So sacraments mean, is it the external sign that heals us or Jesus? Jesus is the one. So sacrament, external signs can heal, confession. So many things are there. But right. the healer is the source is one and the same. He can channelize it. God permits it. And that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Talking of sacraments, I just, quick, I just quickly remembered about how there are certain saints and holy men and women who survived without food, but only on the Eucharist for so many years. Yes. And there's so many, so many miracles. And I think, um, you know, just to back to the question which is raised, the CCC talks about this uh, in, in certain depth in terms of the power of the sacraments yeah, yeah. as well. So, um, you know, it would need some, some kind of, I would think, uh, research to bring up the relevant section, but it is there. And maybe at a later time, we could probably 
Yeah, I think probably Joe's is planning for the Eucharist talk sometime yes. later. Maybe yes. a week. So that will cover a lot of things. Yes. Yes. So we have a little more time for questions. I think this is yeah, a very really interesting I, topic. Yes, John. Yes, John. I want to, I want to thank uh, Brother Raghu because he's clarified a lot of uh, strange things that I've heard about, uh, you know, healing. Like one thing was uh, a priest. I was told that a priest uh, just threw his glasses out after the charismatic renewal, saying that I have been healed. And another two days, he's, his glasses are back again. <laughs> so, yeah, things like that. Or another priest told me that uh, he was healed because he read a book about how you uh, you you uh, focus on a certain uh, uh, healing that your, your body will get healed completely and just this focus on that healing your body your, your mind focus on your body and you can get healed oh that's that's the satanic way i'll tell you that yeah. so that's but, one but of the new priest, age moments. Priest, yeah so what my thing is are priests not educated on this do they not have any uh, course on 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 the healing so I, because i've heard priests speaking like this so i was just wondering what is the truth now you have made it really very clear that it's Christ who heals and it is for a purpose. The purpose is that you have to change. The you have cause. To, yeah. The cause of... The, yeah, you have to remove the cause. You have to, You need to change. You need to become a better person. Cause and come to Jesus Christ. Drawn be God. That's okay. the purpose. That's the exactly. purpose. Exactly. So this is not very... Yeah. So this is not very clear in all... Whatever... Because I've also attended charismatic meetings sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, somebody, Genevieve, has asked me, which is the scripture of Yahuwah Rapha? Exodus 15, 26, the second part of it. Exodus 15, 26, the second part of it is, uh, I am the Lord who heals. It's, it doesn't say Yahuwah Rapha, that's the Hebrew word. That's the Hebrew word. The English word is, I am the Lord who heals you. Okay, the translation of that in the Hebrew is Yahuwah Rapha. Rapha means healing, healer. Okay. Yeah, Genevieve? Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, so fine. Yes. Somebody has asked this question. Uh, when we pray for healing, whom should we pray to? Should we pray to Jesus, to Mother Mary or the saints? You can ask anybody's intercession. Finally, healing is from Jesus. Even if you pray to Mother Mary and asking her to heal, she will direct that only to Jesus Christ. Wedding of Cana. Wine ran out. She did not do anything. But she directed that to Jesus Christ for him to intervene. So she will definitely, even if you approach any saint or anybody, they will simply take you to Jesus Christ and they will take your petition to Jesus Christ alone. And just to add there, I think uh, each, all of us should uh, you know, aim or honestly aim to, sorry, all of us should aim to grow in our relationship with Jesus, to know the nature of God and to grow in that knowledge and I would say that uh, personal relationship with Jesus. And through that, you know, so many things would get revealed to us. You know, when we run through a crisis, what should we do? And each of us may have a different opinion or uh, sorry, different uh, revelation. Also. Some of us may be led through Mother Mary. Some of us may have a relation with the Father God. You know, it could be anything. So, but as Brother said, there are so many, God in his, in his richness and his mercy has given us so many means to, to, uh, to receive his graces. And, yes. Uh, there is no one, one method alone. Very true, Jew. That's why Jesus said, no, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be given to you as well. Yes. yes. So that's the, that's the idea of entire thing. Yes. Brother, I have a question. Yes, Teresa, go ahead. I'm, Joyce or I'm Teresa? Joyce. Okay, okay, Joyce, okay. I'm, I'm Joyce here. Yes, uh, please. See, if you, like you pray for the saint, <laughs> like Saint Anthony or something like that then don't you think they'll idolize the saint more than praying to Jesus? No, sister, if you neglect Jesus and start praying to these saints, it's dangerous, okay? Yes. When we say praying, the term used may be something. What the church tells us is we seek their intercession, we venerate them, we seek their help, take their help. You know, that's all we do. But if you're going to neglect Jesus and go only to Anthony or whichever saint, then it becomes an idol worship. But isn't Jesus the only mediator between us and God? Yes, sister. He is the only channel of that. But God channelizes grace to everybody else. He can use any medium. 
He can use anybody else. That's what I said. That's what I meant when I showed that John 9. Okay. So, see, for example, uh, can you read um, Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, Jude? Revelation 5, 8. When he had taken the scroll, four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Oh, Jude. So every prayer of a saint is before the throne of God as a sweet smelling incense. So when you ask for the intercession of a saint, that saint will take that prayer to the throne of God. That's it. Okay. So that's if you are going to idolize him, that's that's a mistake you make. If you think that saint is more important than God, then it is an idol worship. No. Okay, brother. Thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, Teresa Daniel has raised her hand. Yeah. Up. Uh, yes, brother. Uh, see now, uh, many of our Catholics, you know, uh, they are going to different uh, uh, saints' church, and they are really they are giving importance. Uh, to those saints. See, I am also staunch Catholic, but I am very sad about it. And uh, they are not praying through the intercession of uh, Lord Jesus. Okay, they are praying to Saint Anthony directly. This many Protestants who are aware of this, and they are pointing out always they are fighting uh, for, on this point. Another Sister, thing, as let me, uh, let me tell you. One, I'll, I'll let me I'll finish the other ah, yeah. also. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, as Sister said, uh, Jesus is the only mediator. So we can only pray to through Jesus only, not through Mother Mary and any other saint. And some, many, I know a lot of uh, Catholic people who have. Uh, gone to Divine Mercy Center 12 times, 15 times, and I also have accompanied them, they have changed to uh, Protestant, born again. And they are also all, always arguing with me. And they are saying the saints are dead and gone. They cannot pray for us from heaven. But mm. there is no point in praying to saints. And they are saying what we are praying to Mother Mary and saying rosary, all that is wrong. Every time I fight with them, brother, I have an argument with them, then I go mad, then I really cut off their friendship. Sister, don't argue yes. with them, pray for them. Pray for yes. them. That's I, all. I do that now. Yes. Don't yes. argue with them. We are not here to argue with anybody. You know yes. the truth, you yes. follow the truth, the truth will set you free. That's all. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I feel very hurt when they talk like this. No, no, don't, don't get hurt. You pray for them. Own, how our own Catholics who were so close, some of one group has fought against Father Augustine in Kerala and they have become born again. They formed a huge church and by mistake, she's in my uh, prayer group. Uh, so don't worry, up. sister. You know, we only pray for them. We pray for them so that the Spirit of God may guide them. Okay, don't worry about it. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah. So, uh, Jude, if there's nothing else, shall we close? Uh, Renu has also raised his hand. Okay, who? Renu, okay, Renu. Okay, Renu yeah. Thomas. So please, Renu, please go ahead. Yeah, brother, if there is time for one more question. So uh, you, sure, had sure. Mentioned, uh, you had mentioned uh, about, uh, so you, when, there's this uh, uh, um, cases where it requires uh, that, you know, deliverance is required uh, oh, to be done yeah. by the priest, right? Yes. You mentioned something of that, uh, you know, yes. in that line. Yes. So uh, how do we uh, make a distinction uh, between what uh, that we can pray or mm -hmm. we can exercise a charism and what needs a priest with that charism to be, you know, to be involved? How do you make that distinction? Okay. See, as per the teaching of the Catholic Church, exorcism can be done only by a priest who's authorized by the bishop, number one. Okay. Yeah. Deliverance prayer can be done by any priest. That means, you uh, know, if the affliction is mild. But you can also pray for a deliverance for the people as far as you are confident that you are, you know, uh, um, what do you say, sanctified enough, you're holy enough. 
The only reason we say that is do not do it. It's not that you cannot let them free. So we have this beautiful example in Acts chapter 19. Okay. When the sons of Skeva see that Paul is using the name of delivery, what they do, they see a demonic and they pray for his deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing wrong. But the evil spirit tells him, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? And he jumps on them and destroys them. The reason is that why we tell lay people don't do that is we may not be well prepared enough. That's one of the reasons. Where is the priest with the very office that he has? He has the, already the uh, office of deliverance upon him. So that's the reason we say that you generally send it to a priest for a deliverance. But if you're sure you have the charism, you have the thing, go ahead and do that. Nothing wrong in that. But that depends on how prepared and what kind of a ministry you are in. I think sure. that's a so, very, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, so, uh, brother, you're referring to that there could be a charism with lay people, they are equipped, and then they could do it. But then, if yes. you're not sure, then, yeah. you know, like exercise, uh, you know, wisdom or, yes. so and there and, yeah, okay, okay, got it. Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I was just saying that that is a whole new area of teaching which needs to be covered at some yes, point. Yes, that's one. It comes in the deliverance ministry, it's a long thing. <laughs> Okay, somebody is saying Jesus said to go out to the whole world and cast out demons. Whom did he tell that to? Believers. He said to the apostles. Apostles, yeah. Apostles. Okay, that's why I said. So there is, you know, uh, Jesus told to the very clearly to the apostles, he said this, apostles on there before his ascension. Okay, so that authority is given to the church. And when the church gives you that authority, you also go ahead. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Just to add, a lot of these, uh, I would say, guidelines are given by the church are based on the wisdom of the past 2,000 years. Yes. And there are, yes. there are certain things which the church has learned, uh, which, which it guides. And it is not to restrict people, it is but more to ensure that the right things are done by the right people. That's all. It is not to restrict us, to help us channelize it in the right way. That's all. So that's what I said. As a late person, if you are you know, if you're having that ministry, you have that charism, you can do that. I'm not saying no. But you need to be careful. That's why I said exercise the authority of the church so that we are empowered to do it, actually. Empowered to do that. That's what I'm saying. That. So we need to be clear on that. I think it's been a fascinating session, brother. Please God. And, uh, I'm sure there'll be more questions as well, but I think we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe we'll take any more questions. I'm sure there'll be more that could come up. Probably we'll take it up tomorrow. But we close for today, and brother, I request you to make a prayer. Uh, so that all these yes, I'll make a be... prayer. So tomorrow we'll cover uh, miracles and faith together. It's more or less like this only, not much of a difference. So we'll just finish with that. Let's pray now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this time to be in your holy presence, listening to you. We pray, Lord, that you give us the wisdom and knowledge that come from your Holy Spirit, so that all these wonderful gifts and charism that you're giving everyone, we may exercise it in the right way and the your guidance and by the guidance of the Holy Spirit alone. Let not our human spirit interfere. Let not our own intentions interfere in this. But give us the grace to respond to these charisms in the right way. Channelize it with your grace so that people's faith may be built up and they may be drawn to you. Mary, our mother, be with us and intercede for us. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Brother. So God bless you, Jude. Thanks, everyone. You Thank, you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother Jude. Thank you, brother Thank you. Jude. Thank Thank you. Brother Jude. Thank Thank you. Thank Today you. went Thank on you. very well. Thank you. Thank you, brother Jude. 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 Thank you, brother Jude.